Matt Smith. I'm going to talk a little bit about slide guitar. I've been playing slide guitar since I was a kid because to me it's the most human noise you could possibly make with a guitar. It's, uh, it's also a truly American style uh, that's, that's really uh, something that's wonderful to do and can help uh, add another tool to your arsenal of tricks. What I'm going to do here is I'm in detuning. Now detuning. Basically, you have uh, from the sixth string to the fifth string. I'm, the sixth string is tuned down to D. Fifth string stays at A. Third, fourth string stays at D. The third string is tuned down to F sharp, and then the second string is tuned down to B, and the first string is tuned down to A. Which you can do with your new Planet Waves chromatic tuner, which you should be having. Okay. Basically, what I'm going to do is teach a little bit about slide guitar. And slide guitar, basically, I use my third finger. Bonnie Raitt and Lowell George use their second finger. Some people even use their first finger. Uh, some people use their pinky. And if you're Hound Dog Taylor, you have an extra finger over here. And he used that one. So, But right now, for the rest of us, I use my third finger. I don't like the slide to go past the knuckle. And the secret to playing slide guitar when you're playing is just keep your slide straight, parallel to the frets. What happens, your hand tends to want to do this. But what you want to do is keep the slide straight. So the first thing I would have you do, I usually keep my thumb squarely on the back of the neck, and then the slide completely parallel to the frets. Now you want to practice bringing it up and down the neck, keeping it parallel to the frets so that you don't have any of this. Because when you're tuned to an open chord like this, it makes it real easy to play slide. And the other secret of slide guitar is right hand muting technique. So the right hand muting technique is, is this. Basically, you'll notice most slide guitar players play with their index finger. The reason they do that is because these fingers and the thumb can be used to mute the strings. If I want to, for example, if I want to mute just the third string and isolate all the rest of the strings, my thumb goes over the sixth, fifth, and fourth string, and my second and third finger isolates the first and second string. So now, the only thing you hear is the third string. So anytime I want to move that around, I use my fingers and my thumb. This is just the fifth string, just the second string. So you want to practice that too, because it's really all about right hand muting. That's how you isolate the strings. The rest of it is to trust your ears, not your eyes. Because basically, your slide is over the top of the frets. And when you're playing slide guitar, you have infinite possibilities of being out of tune. So you really want to keep it uh, so that it's as, as clean and as accurate as possible. Concerning vibrato with the slide, vibrato is always usually done below the note, not above it. Here's the note. Now if I use vibrato that goes above and below it, it sounds like this. And the note actually sounds sharp to you. If I played vibrato with just below and coming back up, it sounds like that. It sounds like in pitch. You see how much better that sounds than this? The note is much more defined. And basically I use almost a full fret and width. And sometimes I'll try to make it like an opera singer. Ah, by delaying the vibrato. And that's what gives it that real human quality. Okay? Basically, if you look at playing slide guitar when you're in an open tuning, Here's the 12th fret. Now I look at slide guitar like a knight in chess, and a knight in chess always moves in an L shape. So you can start at any defined movement. I usually use kind of like one fret. So if I started at the 11th fret, slid up to the 12th fret, and then played the first string, so that's the 11th to 12th fret on the second string, and then the first string, I have an L shaped pattern like this. That's an L this way. Now if I did the same thing, and then slid to the third string, 11 and 12 on the second string, and then played the third string. That's an L-shaped pattern like this. Now with the slide, it sounds like this. Now the great thing about open tunings is that you can do L-shapes on every string. From the first to second, second, third to second, fourth to third, fifth to fourth, and with vibrato because you got to love vibrato. So anyway, it's like this. Now, the next chord in a blues progression is called a four chord because it relates to the fourth note of the measure. Don't let that scare you. I'm just a self-taught lunkhead guitar player. So basically, that's at the fifth fret. 
That would be the four chord of the blues, and the five chord would be up here at the seventh fret. So I could L shape up to the fourth fret from the fourth to the fifth string. And also from the sixth to seventh. And obviously we need to have a turnaround, otherwise you can never end your blues and you have to play it over and over again, begging your friends to kill you. So you need to have a turnaround so you can stop your blues. So the turnaround we're gonna learn on this one is simply playing the third fret on the fifth string with the first string together, simultaneously with your thumb and middle finger. And then you raise it back one fret. So that's third string, uh, fifth string, third fret. Second string, or uh, second fret, third, fifth string. First, first fret, fifth string. And then open fifth and open first. And then you just go five, six, seven on any pair of strings you want. Now here's what it would sound like with a blues. So one chord is gonna be 12th fret L shapes. Now fourth to the fifth fret. This tuning, I'm going to show you one more real cool thing here. This is what I call the secret Rye Cooter diagram. <laughs> 